I like my fistable hole. It fits my vape. Hello, I'm Ben and welcome to Quarter Life Quandary Podcast. We'll be chatting about life, relationships, events, experiences and anything in between. Join with Katie and Aaron in this, our Quarter Life Quandary. Hello. Oh, hi, oh. hi. Bonjour. So, Aaron. So, Ben. Good comeback. <laughs> Shut like up. It. I dig it. I dig it. What are you currently doing, Katie? Eating a bagel. What is in the bagel? Primula and ham. What is primula? Cheese in a tube. Cheese in a tube. Which so is soft, soft cheese. Which is somehow shelf stable because every time I see it, it's not in the fridge. That sounds like primula eating. How did you steal my joke and make it worse? I <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate the player, hate the game. It wasn't funny when I did it, and I wasn't aware it could get worse. <sighs> anyway, yeah, it's. Uh, has it actually got any cheese in it? I have no idea. I normally get it from like a normal supermarket, but I saw it in B and M, and it was just with the crackers and crisps and stuff on the shelf. Hmm. Like, I, s- I suppose it's kind of like tinned goods because it is sealed in the tube isn't it but it's still dairy right yeah but it's still heavily processed you would know? you buy tinned yep. cheese like a block of t- like tinned cheddar like a block of cheese it. cheese literally sits in a cupboard for like 10 years to mature mm. it's it's pretty shelf stable doesn't feel right i've been brainwashed by um as long as it's got a skin on it i guess it needs like a waxy seal Hmm. That's true. You've been listening to Big Milk. I've Big told Dairy you. has got me convinced. Yeah. Big Milk. Yeah, that Big sounds milk. like a stage name. Do you not like, remember? Is that like Big Farmer? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. I thought it was Menaby, but it sounds like a porn name. <laughs> the, 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 the cheese version. <laughs> the, 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 the Bukaki starring Big Milk. <laughs> <laughs> This oh, has not even remotely right. put me off my Primula bagel. Oh, hold on, hold on. I've got a cheese-based porn star name. Smeg? No. Aww. Aww. <sighs> Max Crackercock. I'm still eating cheese here, dude. That sounds... Wait, I've just processed that. That sounds awful. <laughs> what? Crackercock? Yeah. <laughs> For like multiple reasons. Sounds like some interracial play porn star thing. Uh, well, like I'm, someone I'm not... breaking their dick mid coitus. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. What other cheese based porn star names you can come up with? I can't say I've put a great deal of thought into it. Uh, I am. Give me a minute. We give you too much minutes on this. Yeah, okay, too much one. minutes, Aaron. <laughs> too, too much, much minutes. <laughs> you have too much minutes. The uh, big cheese feels obvious. Why have I forgotten every type of cheese that exists? I'm I'm trying to make camembert work with some kind of gay bear situation, but it's just it's not coming to me. What about I'm just trying... camembert? Fair. Camembert, that's yeah. That's the whole joke. Yep. Yeah. Aaron kind of nailed it. I um I was trying to use port salut, but it's I've, I've come up empty. No, it's nothing. Um, this is disappointing. I'm trying to think of like a halloumi based one. I mean, if there's like daddy issues, it can be. E damaged goods. Uh, Ankle braids, E girls, damaged goods, and E dem. Hold on, hold on. Free me, daddy. <laughs> that, that could work. 
I feel like we're down a slippery slope already. Cheese based sexual puns. Um, it's degenerated from nothing to somehow less. Yeah. We know who our target audience is. Um, no one. Marin. Yeah. <laughs> Ed. <laughs> Ed? Yeah. Is he our new guy for this, yeah, this episode? Yeah, Ed's our new guy for this episode. Okay. I suppose Bye, I should Ed. also branch out because obviously we are, you know, not just a monosexual podcast. Yes. Um, Stacy and. I don't know, what's like a gender neutral name? Ashley. There we go. Frankie. Alexa. Hey guys. Or people. Lauren. Joe. Uh, Sam. Mm-hmm. Alex. Le from the Omicron Percy IA. Lee. Mm. Tony. Tony's a good one. Charlie. Charlie. Sam. Said Better Sam. Did that. Damn it. <laughs> You're out. Now it's head to head, me and Katie. Oh, shit. Oh. Um, I hate this, I guess. I can't think of any. Um, Ollie? Mm, no. You got Oliver and Olivia, so Ollie can be like both. Hmm. Okay. It's a stretch, but I'll allow it. Mm. Fucking stretch. <laughs> what's what's new in the world? I'm I'm trying to look trying to remember what my topic I've I've put a little title in and it doesn't make any sense to me. Read it out. Uh dyslexia time, dash dash, six degrees of separation, is it like twenty degrees or something? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> That what? is the most fucking convoluted note taking I've ever heard. I thought mine was bad. Mine was just ankles one week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just write down the word ankles. Yeah, I don't know what to say. That's fine. Was that something to do with like sexy ankles or it was, was that about sexy ankles? I don't even remember if I talked about it. Oh, are we talking I think about it was just like, a fun fact. In the olden days about how ankles were sexy and yeah. Oh, it was was it to do with the dresses? Mm-hmm. We've done this whole thing. I'm yeah, pretty sure we've done yeah. this bit. Yeah, well, I was just trying to remember from the, the key word. Oh, that's fair. No, yeah, it was um to lift their dresses above the dirt because working girls couldn't wash their dresses the same amount that like richer women could. Yeah. So they had to keep their dresses clean. So if people saw you lifting your skirt above the mud, they'd assume you were a prostitute. Therefore, ankles became like... Synonymous. Yeah. I'm really wrecking my brain. I was at, like, this was a really good thought I was having. <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, I just need to give myself enough detail to remember what it meant. <clears throat> okay, so repeat the sentence. You know, like six degrees of separation. Uh huh. Like, is that actually a? I, I've, I did have somewhere to go with this. I for I some really- reason put twenty degrees. But like as a, an angled degrees, I know like three sixty is sixty degrees, but you have completely uh, lost me um, on what that means to six degrees of separation and dyslexia. How do they all tie in? Oh, uh, hold on. is it something oh, to do about uh, sayings or something taking it too literally? No, uh, it was. I think the dyslexia is me being dyslexic and getting like too confused um. by. So do you know like how? This is, or this is my hot take on it. Um, you know, when you read something and you think it means something else until someone corrects you later on, you've done this to me many times on this. Um, I was like, maybe there's other hidden meanings in words that I haven't yet found out. And sometimes it's, I leave myself notes to try and figure out if I, (laughs) if I beat my own dyslexia and figured out something that I should have already known. I.e., the six degrees of separation does actually have a relative term in maths. Uh, what what's the de- what is the six degrees? I don't get why it's like, degrees. Not degree, as in angle. Is it not? No. Not for fuck's sake. 
Isn't it? A, isn't it more of a scientific term of like degrees in temperature? No, like there's more than one definition of the word degree. Like degree can mean the amount or like to the extent of which something happens. So like six degrees of separation is like how many, um, like the amount that thing takes to get to another thing. Ah, uh, okay. So like level or stage or point, like that can be. Okay. That can be degree as well, as well so, as the measurement. Like six steps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. I thought it had something to do with like maths angles. I was just. No. I thought. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> Whoa. <Yikes>. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Like, like in an exam to question, like, to what degree do you think this statement is correct? To what extent do you think this statement is correct? They're like mm. interchangeable. Yeah. I can't hear you because you're mumbling. Yeah, exactly. That's why. Are you are you sad that you got used as a comparison? Or yes. Like the bar. Yes. At least you set the bar. Fuck you. Did I don't you just, just set the bar. I raise the goddamn bar. Or lower it, depending on the situation. Oh, God. This ice cream has been out of the freezer for like three seconds, and it is already pulp. Good. I'm sorry. I take that back. Thank you. Is oh, it real ice cream? No. Is it that fake yogurt? Gelato. Pulp? It's Halo Top. <laughs> It's a uh, 360 calorie per pint ice cream. <laughs> I like that ice cream is measured in pints. Mm. It's because it knows it... I'm going to let it melt and drink it and hate it. I've, I've never really noticed that it's measured in pints. Is that an Americanism? I think so, but it's the same size and it is <clears throat> volumetrically, I guess, a pint. Hmm. Like the Ben and Jerry's size tubs are like pints of ice cream, right? Yes. Mm. All I ever remember it from is shit. Miss Congeniality. Was it cookie dough? I uh, always Ms. get the cookie dough one. But this time I got the fudge brownie one. No, it's because he said it was shit. Oh. No, Miss Congeniality. I was uh, still in ice cream land. Please talk about Miss Congeniality, please. It was the beginning of the film, and she's had like a really shit day at work, and she goes to the pub, and uh, she goes to the barman, I'll have a pint. And he's like, oh god, a whole pint. And she's like, yeah, it's been a rough day. And he, he just plonks down like a type of Ben and Jerry's on the bar. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think it's an, Amer an Americanism. Mechanism. I just um, decided to drive to Asda to get ice cream because I can now. Way. Only took me ten years longer than it was meant to, but to be fair, I wasn't trying for those years. No, I think you've done really well. You got Thanks. there in the end. It's I, not um... so much the destination. It's the... okay. That same doesn't actually apply to this. No. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't work. <laughs> Shut up. I was trying, okay? You were. I really appreciate it. No, I did a whole um, a whole bunch of driving. I've been driving for basically three hours because I can. Yeah. Is the novelty worn off yet? No, because I still need to not shit myself on roads. Mm. So I'm just trying to um, navigate the local area over and over again just so that it's second nature and doesn't make me I don't know I've still got that initial anxiety of getting in the car and going oh shit they've made a horrible mistake I've passed I now own and can legally drive this yeah, yeah. That goes. and the only way out of it is through it I guess you got to just do it oh I fucked up this morning yeah <laughs> well, uh, I've got a new car mm. and uh, I'm not used to how much bigger it is Oh, as so, in like engine or actual size? Actual size. And uh, I'm reversing it out of... I've got an Alhambra. Is that Bless you. 
anyway, um, reversing out the back gate, and I thought I was in reverse, and I was in first, and I drove into a gate, and I smashed the light. Oh shit! And uh, I was I looked at it in the dark. I was really angry. I was like, oh, it looks fine. Just I, I popped the body panel, and then uh, when I got to work, I was like, that light's not sitting square. So I lifted the bonnet, and the whole back of the light is just crumpled into itself. So oh, like the lens, the lens is great, but the, the back of the fitting is destroyed. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't sit square. And guess how much it is? A lot. It's about £175 just for one cluster. That is not ideal. Ooh. No. That sounds extremely painful. Mm. Uh, this is why you mentioned that you didn't have the Sophia anymore when I called you the other day, because it was a very recent change. Yeah. Hmm. I thought that just happened ages ago, and you happened to mention it because I was talking about my new car. No. Hmm. No, it happened ages ago when someone wrote my car off, but as you know, insurances aren't very quick with these things. What happened? Uh, I I was parked in North London, and uh, someone decided that my parked car looked very good to driving into. Yeah. And uh, they took the back rear. Hold on. I'm sure you did speak about this because you came out and you're like, "Oh, that's a that's a lot of damage." <laughs> yeah, you but did like, notice to like the Monday or something like that. Yeah, it happened. It happened on a Friday, and I didn't notice until the Sunday. I'm oh, well. now, um, I'm now super happy that I'm fully comp. Oh yeah, are you are you insured against uninsured drivers? Yeah. Good. Obviously, they were like, who crashed into you? Like, I don't know. I wasn't there. They were like, oh, okay. I also got the uh, lost and stolen key cover. Yeah, that's not as important. Mm. Uh, I just well, like keys how are pricey, especially are for old cars. I mean, how likely are you, are you to lose your keys? Well, I mean, it's me, so highly. But... The battery's intermittent on them anyway, so if I do lose them, I probably wouldn't even be that mad. Mm. I keep having that thing happen where I'm like, oh, the key the key thing worked, like the button worked, and they're going to unlock it with the key and the alarm screaming at me. I'm surprised the battery of my key fob has lasted this long, purely because the amount of times I just like to press buttons. Mm-hmm. Um, I met up with a friend last week and we went to the pub and we were outside having a smoke and having a drink and she was like is your car okay because the lights keep on flashing like all the freaking time I was like oh yeah I've got my hands in my pocket and I just keep on pressing the button <laughs> because you know buttons <laughs> Did do you not put your phone on silent for the podcast no he, he did not I did not I apologise to our Gallant listeners. Nope. Yeah, I like my little shitbox. It's Have not actually that much of a shitbox. Him or her? No, it's not um apparent what the name is. It's not like obvious. It normally is. Mm. You normally look at it and, and then the name appears in your brain and that's it. That's what I mean. I'm calling it rusty because it's like a rusty red. But I've just been calling it shitbox. Oh, don't call, don't call it rusty. That's only going to invoke. Exactly. The so rust. I've, but then I'm calling it shitbox. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do that. You're going to invoke somebody's, you know, <laughs> shit in it. <laughs> no, I um, I also did some like, I did a, I did some jobs in it. I I filled up my oil. I changed my brake light. Okay, I'm very pleased with myself. We use the high grade vegetable oil, yes. Yeah, sure. Good man. <laughs> Fully synthetic vegetable oil. Still had bits wash- of last night's takeaway in it. You put washing up liquid in the uh, in the radiator, yeah. Yeah, nice and, and give clean. It squeaky, squeaky clean. <laughs> Make sure you bleed it. I wash the engine. Wash the engine, yeah. You stab the radiator to get all the air out, yeah. Mhm. That's how you bleed it, right? Yeah. Did you put the premium air in your tyres? Mm. No, the light air. It's expensive, but it's worth it. Oh, good man. 
I don't think mm. if there's any others. Mm. Oh, remember when you were, uh, you pressure washer your car, you pressure washer the seats because they're, uh, they're waterproof. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It gets right in there. Mm. Can't think of any more. No. Do you know what? My interiors are actually pretty clean for how old the car is. It's because someone cared. There's like one watermark on the fabric and that's about it. I'm going to give it some uh, um, upholstery cleaner. Because i got a goodie bag of uh, car bits. Mm. First thing I went out and bought was jump cables because... <laughs> no, I'm not. I mean, I totally wish I had You need to know a friend that would come and jump start you. Mm. What time did what I ring you when I asked for a jump start? Which is getting harder and harder to do. What head unit you got in it? What? The the radio. Is it factory fitted or is it... A, oh, factory, a, yeah. yeah. But it's not actually bad for 2008. It's got a CD player and I think it's got like AUK's ability in the glove box. It's got like a red and white, two red and white ports. So I've just bought an adapter for those and I'm going to just try it out and see if it works. Mm. Because if it does, I was expecting a cassette deck, if I was honest. No, no, I've got a CD player. And like when you press source, it goes to like AUX1. So I'm oh, guessing yeah. there is Definitely. capability there. So I'm going to plug in the red and white adapter cable to female AUX port, plug in an AUX cable, and then probably put a Bluetooth adapter on it so I don't have to keep fucking around in my glove box and I'll just use that. Oh, Sounds like a Bluetooth. Mm. You can just get a cigarette lighter one like I used to have. Yeah, but I've got a, um, I'm going to get, probably get one of those if this doesn't work. Um, but if it does work, I've already, I've got a one USB port cigarette lighter thing that I'm using for my phone mount. Because my phone mount, the back of it is a wireless charger. Huh. Sounds like From Poundland. All, sounds like you've got this all planned out. Mm. It's a gravity phone mount. So when the phone rests on the bottom of it, the top bit's like secure Rips. around the sides of it yeah and then once it's in place it just starts charging so it's pretty decent it's not bad mm. five pound in poundland where nothing is a pound anymore apparently no i've noticed that mm. very frustrating and they just sell like 10 pound sex toys for some reason yeah i they look like shit they do they've just got like neon pink dildos for four pound I mean, it's all kind of coming up, guys. It's not. So, you know. Just for the crack, I was going to like put it on my uh, dash. I mean, you might come back on a hot day and it's just a puddle. <laughs> <laughs> are they suction bases? They are, and they had one out on display for some reason. I think someone just yanked it out of the box in Poundland. But I wanted to see how good the suction was and just stuck it to one of like the plastic facings on the shelves. Could not get it off for love nor money, so I just left a giant dick hanging off the side of one of the panels. That's great. I'm going to buy one mm. just to throw it at someone's car. Mm. Oh, yeah. It's got it's really good suction. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Don't do it to my car, though. <laughs> Not yet. You see, it was a shitbox. I mean, it is. It's a pretty <laughs> shitbox. It's got one massive scuff on it, though. Well, my car was pristine until this morning. <laughs> oh, mate. Oh, what what did you say it was called? An Alhambra. Think of what a taxi driver drives. I'm um, I'm looking at it immediately. To screams taxi. Or airport transfers. It's just not even coming up without with anything. There we go. Oh. Yeah, that's like some what is it, the Addison Lee? Yeah. Mm. It's not the old one, it's a newer one. The old one looks even worse. That is huge. Yeah. That is a minibus. I know you need a big car, but that is absolutely a minibus. Like my car is tiny. It's a Peugeot 207 CC GT convertible. So, 207 GT... CC GT convertible. CC TV. <laughs> And I've got it in like the rusty red colour, not the fucking pillar box red colour. 
Looks nice. I like it. Is it? Is it actually got back seats, or is that no. just a roll bar? It, it does have back seats. It does have back seats, but it's advertised as a um, what is a convertible with four seats called a? It's, it's got seats for your handbag. Basically, it's it's advertised as four seats, but it might as well be a roadster. Like it doesn't, they're not usable. Yeah, I've I've sat in the back of a. Uh, do you remember the Tigras? Oh my god, I remember the Tigras. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, put the smallest. Seats. The smallest person we know. Oh, I just put chocolate ice cream in my bed now. Let's we, go shit myself. You know, um, three small people. You could fit them all in the back. Um, my one, my small people. Yeah, your small people. Your small people. Yeah, my we, small person. We've got dwarfs now. Yeah. Got dwarfs. What? <laughs> um, my my small, <clears throat> quite gender fluid person. Oh, the snake. Uh, I, I say snake in a very. Nice terminology because that because be of the him. shedding skin from the tattoo. I, I, I mean, because I could see him literally just like slivering across the floor. Mm. <laughs> well, they um, squeezed in the back just about, and this this person is like a lady's size four to six, maybe like tiniest, scrawniest person, and they were like curled up in the back with no headroom. <laughs> Because the roof is very low. Looks all right though. And this was when the, the like the front seat passenger had to be like cranked up all the way to the top and all the way forwards for them to fit. Yeah. It's nice. It's a nice drive though. <coughs> I a... do remember the Tigra. And is your El El Hamra? Is that a Seat? Yeah. Hmm. I'm literally looking at a picture of this Peugeot 207. And they've pulled the front seat so far back that it's touching the rear seats. Mine touches the rear seats. The way it, w- my driving position uh, touches the seat behind me. Wow. Coupe, that's what it's like advertised as. Coupe. Fucking terrible. But like this is the exact colour that I've got. Um, Prostitute lipstick red. Yes. No, the slightly muted version, not the bright pillar box red one. Okay. It's sort of like a rusty orangey red. The the lipstick's been on the prostitute for a few days red. She's been out in the sun for a little while. I need to get the headlights um, almost buffed because they're kind of tarnished. Slightly foggy. Yeah, Yeah, I don't know if it's actually like the texture or if it's just dirt. I have seen a lot of life hacks, and I'm doing air quotes, but uh, I haven't actually tried it myself. Yeah, I just, I might just get some actual cleaner for it. Mm. Who comes to me on the freaking 7th of February and goes, keep the date, keep March 5th free? Like, no, I'm busy. March 5th? It's already what? February. <laughs> For a baby shower of all things. Oh, for God's sake. They should clean the baby more often. Right? It's not even here yet. Also, that they... our gigs haven't been cancelled yet, Aaron, so hold off on that uh, Airbnb. <laughs> well, I say Airbnb hotel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm looking at the comms for your car. Pointless oh, yeah. rear seats. Yep. I have no idea why they're, they're a fucking parcel shelf. They don't need to exist. <laughs> oh, Aaron, oh. you don't need to shout into the microphone. I'm that not shouting into the microphone. Christ, I'm, my, my, my fucking mic- ears! The <laughs> microphone's nowhere near. It's in the same position. It's the fucking volume of your voice. Yeah. I, I, honest to God, can't get off Amazon buying stupid shit for my car. <clears throat> have you bought fluffy dice yet? No, I'm not Have you bought that. a Yankee Candle air freshener yet? No, I bought the Black Ice Tree. Okay, good. Because <laughs> they smell lush. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. I want to get a Studio Ghibli, like, no face on a swing to hang from my mirror because he's cute as fuck. We need to get you a really badly jokey bumper sticker. 
Yeah. What you need to do is you need to put it on there without her noticing. See how long it takes to. Uh, I will get a never message. see it. I will it's never got, see it. I feel like it's got to be mantis based. Like if you get any close, I will bite your head off or something like that. Oh, now I've got mantis. to look for mantis stickers. <laughs> should, we buy her, should we buy her a tiny spoiler? No, oh, yeah. Oh, My no. car has no business having a spoiler. I want it immediately. Should we do like that guy on TikTok and just try to yes. just slowly pimp Katie's Peugeot 207 without her realising? Yeah. Do it then. <laughs> no, because you're the only one that's going to benefit out of this situation. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? We'll just surprise you next Christmas and just be like, Katie, look at your car. And she's like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I haven't looked at it for the last 12 months. Honestly, and I, at the, I, I just, I'm so unconvinced that I know how to use my lights as well. I, I've got turning lights, and I keep thinking my full beams have come on. <laughs> eh. I've um, I've got cruise control in mine, and to turn it on, you need to like flick it, and I keep flicking the indicators. <laughs> I'm on the motorway, <laughs> indicating left and right, and I'm like. Rack, rack. <laughs> If there's one thing that's come from this, um, I finally know how to spell Peugeot. Peugeot. <laughs> didn't, didn't you used to semi work for them? Um, no, they're semi the reason I got made redundant. Oh. There's like switches on my car that I don't know what they mean. What do they look like? One is on the... So I've got obviously indicator and wiper flipper things. Um, the flippers. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there is a flipper below the uh, windscreen flipper, and it controls like music and shit. But it's got a wheel on it that doesn't control the volume. There's like buttons for the volume. There's a wheel on it, and I don't know what the wheel does. I think it's just like mono. Uh, you know, it might be a skip tracks. No, there's a skip track button. You know your onboard computer. Yeah. Have you made sure it doesn't go through like the mileage and stuff? It doesn't because there's an independent button for that as well. Mm. Yeah, it's it's confusing. I need to actually look at my manual, but it's in the car and I don't care enough. And it does nothing. I, I've touched it. I've I've, I've spanned it. It, it. it it goes nowhere. Maybe your Persia was ahead of the curve, and it's just like a fidget wheel. <laughs> Fuck knows. Fuck knows. What the French are innovative. No. I'm literally looking at my owner's manual because online. I was genuinely laughing. It actually says fidget wheel. I just oh, this is a lot. Okay, there we go. I'm trying to find funny car accessories, but I'm trying to I've, find them. They don't exist. The, the, no, people obviously take it very seriously. <laughs> Dicks. No. I want dumb stuff. I want my car to be a joke. Like its owner. What? <laughs> <laughs> I I literally went to check to see you didn't drop out. <laughs> <laughs> What did you just say to me? Oh, I should not have eaten that pint of ice cream. Yes. Mm. Always. Unless you're lactose intolerant, then that was very silly. I, I can't remember. Did I do my lactose story recently? Mm, I don't remember if you did. Uh, um, so I got dinner made for me last weekend. And uh, the lady who was cooking was making me like a prawn pasta dish oh, so yeah. she she like cooked the prawns like all the pasta uh like fried off some like onions and other bits and garlic and stuff like that popped them all in the pan together and um then just picked up a a pot of all i could see or identify as was was cream and I just looked, and the horror in my eyes as it was just slowly being poured into the pan. I was like, "Oh no, oh no, this isn't going to end well." <laughs> Luckily, I sort of had a 
a cheeky sort of look at the pot without saying anything because I didn't want to be rude and sort of go, uh, oh yeah, just let you know, I'm lactose, you know, <laughs> and make it a bit of a problem. Um, Which you should have asked. Oh uh, well, you know, but I looked. It was um, it was plant based, so it was either soy or what have you. So there was a, a huge sigh of relief that overwhelmed my body. Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah, yeah. It's a great thing of arse volcano. <sighs> I was trying to make a good impression, Ben. I don't believe you can. I can. I'm a very impressionably good person. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Those are words. And they were in the correct order. Yes, <laughs> to, make a, to make a coherent sentence. Well, I'm feeling very sleepy today. It's it, it do be a Monday today, people. It do be a Monday. So I yeah. also had COVID last week, so that might be. Wait, what? Yeah, I had COVID last week. How was it? it was fucking easy. <laughs> <laughs> It's very tired. I feel like that Mario level on Mario Maker where it's all just like fire rods. No, no, no. Having no. not got it yet. <laughs> oh, it's not been off again. You weren't <laughs> here in the pre-lobby. He was going nuts about Mario fucking theme songs. And don't do it, Ben. We might get... No, we might get a cease and desist. From who? Nintendo. Who are they? <laughs> never heard, never of heard of them. We just get our hit hit with our first fucking was it DMA. So I'm looking on Amazon, okay, and you mm-hmm. can get a pig that's hanging in a noose. Upset the vegans. Oh what now? A pig that's in a noose. Aww. Oh my god. Oh my god, this <laughs> is amazing. You could um oh I've got I've got to send you guys this. So uh Hold on, what was that? I I bought today my first Valentine's card. Aww. Um Mate, this is more important than your Valentine's. Ah, oh, for fuck's sake. It's a good Valentine's card. Alright, I'll come back to it. Have, have a look, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> it's, it's it's Barry Wood sitting on a bed meme air freshener. Now if you don't know what that is, to the to Ed and who else was it? Stacy, uh, um, yeah, yeah, just search up Barry Wood sitting on a bed, and uh, you'll, you'll you'll figure it out. That's stunning. Didn't he pass away? Oh, they were all dead, really, <laughs> dead inside. But like super recently, I think he died really recently. Oh, I don't know. The thing is, what makes me laugh if you look comparable with similar items, it's got the little trees air fresh like the black ice one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't find anything silly. They're all. Oh, yeah, all very I, saw the, I saw the noose one you were talking about. Yeah. Okay, so Aaron, you've finally bought a Valentine's card, even though you've been in relationships before. I mean, not for the past few years. So you never bought your ex's Valentine's cards? Nope, because never in a relationship around Valentine's Day. So the. Hmm. The last one I think I possibly bought was... Weren't you... You you were in a long-term relationship a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. It was... The last one I bought was probably for my ex fiance. So that was a good good few years ago now. So, um... And the card was from Amazon. And I feel like you would definitely be able to confirm this. Probably Katie as well, because she's been in the danger zone. Um... Danger zone. Danger zone. Yeah, the Valentine's card reads, there's nobody else I'd rather have snoring as loud as fuck next to me. That is you. Have you bought a Valentine's card for yourself? I mean, I may have shared a bed fairly recently with somebody that also, you know, partakes in the snoring activity. Okay. I've already received my... um. Valentine's Day card has Francis on it from the fucking train TikToks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love you as much as Francis loves trains. 
Yeah, he knows you very well. <laughs> <laughs> He's a good egg. He got me like a little car survival kit with like oil, screen wash, um, interior shampoo, dash wipes. It's very nice. Also, very sneakily filled up my tank. Oh. Yeah. Is that, is that sneaky? Well, I the tax was like two hundred and fifty, and I was sort of like, oh, yours is twenty pound a year. This fucking sucks. Um. And I wasn't like grumpy about it, but it was sort of like a, oh, that was an unexpected expense. And he was like, would you like me to pay like a hundred of it? I'm like, no, that's, it's fine. It's my car. It's, I'll deal with it with whatever. And he was like, well, I'll put some petrol in your tank. And I was like, okay, but like only enough to get us to like just the around. petrol station. <laughs> yeah. And he just filled up the tank. It was like 60 quid. It was really sweet. Oh, mm-hmm. very sweet. Here's something you should buy for your car. Okay. Yes. Oh my god, it's a siren. Well, it's actually a it's actually a megaphone PA system, but yes. Oh my god, the <laughs> fucking chaos I you, you, you don't want to be telling people you've got siren fit to your car. No. That's the um That's I, I sort of like that would need to be on someone else's car so I could cause chaos as the passenger. Oh no, that's going on my car. Yeah. Oh so I, I found the the car sticker I'm going to put on your car as well. I thought uh, comical horns were going to be a lot more common in society than what they actually are. I went around playing the purge siren out of someone's car at the start. Of the my car. <laughs> my <Yeah>. car. <laughs> and someone else's. Yeah. And it was funny at the time. Now, now it seems lame, but... Oh yeah. my goodness! Don't stick that to my car. I'm going to stick it it's to your car. It's only three pounds. That's oh. honk if you want a blowjob. <laughs> <laughs> it's down to one ninety five. <laughs> yeah, but like ninety nine p postage. I'm a buy free. <laughs> no. <laughs> Don't do it. I can sl- oh, I can slap one on your car. I can slap one on your boy's car. When I can- oh. Slap another one on your passenger's door. He's not a blowjob kind of guy. Yeah, same. Giving. Receiving, sure. <laughs> I mean, same. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was very confused for a moment. <laughs> I mean, same. <laughs> I live in constant confusion. Same. I mean, you're both friends of me, so same. True. Comical eyelashes for the pillow headlights. Oh, yeah, if you do that, I would disassociate myself with you. I'm going to put them on your car. Fuck right off. <laughs> Archibald is a serious car. Oh, he's a good bump sticker. I love bump sex. <laughs> <laughs> Stunning. So yeah, I rear-ended a car today that had a I love bum sex bumper sticker. <laughs> there's there's a giant giraffe car seat protector. A what? It's just a picture of a giraffe with sunglasses on it. It's like the whole car seat. Why? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Will that be for like baby seats? Because they go the opposite way around? So no, this is like it's like a universal car protector cover seat. Fucking horrendous. Maybe yeah, somebody a... just really likes giraffes. I mean, it looks fucking terrible. <laughs> Are you having a giraffe? Oh my god, that does look hideous. <laughs> Do you know what? I guarantee you the past owner of your oh. Peugeot 207 had those car seats. God. <laughs> That's horrific. I want to get car seat covers. I was but, about I mean, to say, there's, I was like, there's definitely got to be like the the wolf, the classical sort of wolf by the moon sort of ones, and literally the next sort of style is a weird horse one, and then it's the wolf, the wolf ones. <laughs> oh. Yeah, of course, it's got to have the mushroom ones as well. Yeah. Eat trash, do crime. I can't believe I'm actually reading my manual. 
the the bit on like child seats is just redacted because <sighs> no. Remember to strap your child securely into a seat. Use ratchet straps if required. My car absolutely does not hold children. Should do. Mm. So when do you uh, when are you start to cut hair? She's not a fucking hairdresser car. <laughs> You're very mean. But that's what the back seats are for, for all of your barbering equipment. <laughs> for all of the hair I'll collect. <laughs> I'm going to take it home and make stuffed toys. Yeah, just make sure you don't, you know, take down the, so- the hard top because it will just get flowing out as you're driving oh. around. I um, went to go and see our friend's dad today. The egg. Oh, yeah. Went went because I obviously we went to get donuts and stopped off at f- the father's house, and um, I wowed him with my convertible. He got very excited watching the roof go down. <laughs> very excited. Oh, I mean, hopefully you might stop around, you know, my place maybe tomorrow evening. <laughs> that is terrifying to me. <laughs> I've seen the roads leading to your place, and they scare me. I mean, you could go straight up the A6 and then cut through on the decent roads. That's still terrifying. Ah, it's not that bad. I have not been out of, like, my hometown. I still feel like them letting me pass was some horrible mistake. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) It'll be fine until you kill someone. Uh... And then it won't be fine. But it will be fine. Because they'll be dead and you'll be fine. I love that the back headrests are just roll over bars. <laughs> People are, were never meant to sit in those seats. <laughs> like, it's a death trap for passengers. Yeah, you don't want your legs in the back seats. Mm. I mean, try getting your legs into the back seats. Oh, mate, honestly, when I... When you do see the shit box, I, I, I am begging you to get in the back. Like, I've decided the back is so useless, I've just put in some cushions to make it look nice. <laughs> some scatter cushions. It's just a yeah. decorative parcel shelf. Like, but, what, but what are you going to do when you have the roof down and someone comes by and nicks your pillows? <laughs> well, they'll go they in the boot. <laughs> be boot you should, pillows. You should but take whatever your... boot there is left, because when the roof's down, the boot is just full of roof. You should uh, you should take your front seats out and just sit in the back seats. <laughs> oh, honest to God, when my seat is in the right position, it is touching the back seat. How are you going to pick us both up at once? Oh, one of y'all is going to have to die. I mean, the boot can easily fit through <laughs> your bodies. Hold on, hold on. Shotgun me. You can't shotgun the car without seeing it. True. No, I Them want to rules. die. Oh. oh. Yeah, you can you can do that. The boot would fit three standard dead bodies. What with with the hard top down? <laughs> no, no, a small child <laughs> with the with ah. the top down. Right, are we talking like seven to eight or nine at a push? Okay, if they you know hormonally stunted. Yeah, nine year old girl, maybe not a guy. Okay, okay, that's fair. So, if you've got any kids to kill, I've got the perfect boot. We're turning into that podcast. Aren't wow! We? I do have the right boot for it, mate. You got to think how big mine is. <laughs> yeah, true. Mine. And from what I've looked at, online, I'm that whole like car can be a boot. Thirty, forty. I mean, are we are we pushing them in, or are they just laying in? Well, they're dead. You can just like origami them. I reckon I could get thirty-one in my car. Tetris them in there. Oh, the most annoying Aaron, thing is we're going to get a cease and desist from Tetris. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing is we can't even test this theory without committing crimes. It's sad. I mean, we could probably like Adams the clothes shop a long gone bust, but I'm sure we could probably find their mannequins still. When BHS went bust, I was like, they were like, everything must go. I was like, the mannequins, and they were like, no. I was like, the mannequin hands. They were like. Okay, 
So they just sold me a <laughs> bunch of mannequin hands and I've still got them. <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> is in your house? I've got like fucking four mannequin hands in a box because they were a pound. <laughs> Some, you sometimes what? you tell me things and I'm just think, who's letting you do this? <laughs> Do you know what annoys me is that occasionally she'll, like, I'll ring her up and I'll be like, do you want to hang out today or, you know, what are you doing? And she'll be like, oh, no, I'm, I'm taking my bedroom to pieces and I'm, you know, <laughs> chucking stuff away and stuff like that. She's now come out on a public podcast and said that she's got a box of mannequin hands from BHS, which closed, what, three years ago? More than that. It's more four, than that. Yeah, four years ago. <laughs> what? What? What scenario are you thinking that you go, hmm, do you know what? I could really do with a mannequin hand right now. I've got, I've got to come to Katie's side here and say, if I had four mannequin hands, I would keep them just in case. Right. I mean, you never know. You don't know Is when this... they're going to come in handy. Uh, no, no, no. You set me up, dude. Oh... Uh... It's your fault, really. <laughs> bullshit. This is fucking bullshit. Ed uh, and all the other people, um, I apologise. On behalf of my co-host, that was a terrible joke. I, yeah, fuck, got, why didn't I make it? I've got <laughs> I've got mannequin hands. I've got a Barack Obama mask, like a full head mask. Um, well, that's handy, just in case you ever want to rob a bank. Yeah. Oh, see, mannequin hands come in handy now. Right. right. Put the money in the hands. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. What colour are the hands? White. White. Why'd you say that with such disdain? I don't know what colour the mannequins were. All mannequins, all mannequins seem to be, like, tip X white. Okay, yeah, fair. I've got a mutual friend's Skyrim sword from ten years ago that I painted and apparently just never returned. <laughs> I did the details on it. And was like, here you go, here's your sword back, and just never did that bit. So that's on my wardrobes. I could probably go that way. Um, I've got some dumb shit in my house, man. I've got I so mean, many you've... resined insects. You've been to my flat, I've got some dumb shit in my flat. Your flat has exactly zero things in it. Exactly. Besides me. <laughs> 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 oh, I should really stop with the scent depression. <laughs> Um, I've got so many bug eggs. If they if they hatch, they might not. But if they hatch, I'm going to be inundated with leaf insects. Hmm. When I bought the female leaf insect, I didn't realise they didn't need to mate to lay fertile eggs. What? Yeah. So they're just asexual. Mm-hmm. Or are they, do they store eggs? If, they'll, if they mate, they'll have like a mixture of like male and female hatchlings, like nymphs. But if they don't find a partner to mate with, by the time they get mature, they'll just clone themselves. That's mad. That is horrifying. Yeah. It happens with a lot of inverts, but yeah. This is a species that will just clone itself and lay eggs that are exact, like, genetic replicas of her. Oh no, that'd be horrifying. Could you imagine getting to like 45 and your body just goes, well, guess what? You haven't had a mate yet, so you're just going to, you know, ah. <laughs> mitosis what, yourself. What I'm, con- what I'm concerned about is that if any of these eggs hatch, let alone all of them, if like, say, a quarter of them, say I get 10 hatchlings out of this, they're all also going to be females that can asexually reproduce. Yeah, but that's where, you know... I'm going to have to start freezing and disposing of eggs. <laughs> Or do you could start our business. I mean, do you want a leaf insect? No, but precisely, I could, you could leave them in people's houses you don't like. I could start a pest removal company. And you could be planting the pest yeah. in the Yeah. I guarantee my work for thirty days. <laughs> oh, oh, Aaron, Katie, what's, ever, yeah, what's Katie, ever since thing? you came round my flat the other day, I've been inundated with leaf insects. Well, Aaron. <laughs> Funny you should mention, but I've just started a pest control business specialising in leaf insects. If Aaron works out where this is going to go, I have a way to make him very irrationally angry. What else could I... um... Oh, no, 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 no! (laughs) Ben, I'm sorry, but no, no, 
No, I don't. What else can where I, it's pl- going. No, what else you're not can doing I plant that requires oh. a lengthy, expensive removal process? Fuck's sake. Japanese not weed. It's Japanese not weed, then. Yeah, of course, it's fucking Japanese not weed. See, I told you, irrationally angry. <laughs> I don't know why, but you just irritate the fuck out of me whenever you goddamn fucking mention it. <laughs> That's why I mention it so much. Whenever I see a... Do you know what? And the thing is, I'm sure I must see the same guy driving around in his, you know, get rid of Japanese not weed van in London. I'm just like, you fuck off. <laughs> I mean, you're doing a good service, but still, fuck off. <laughs> I found out what that switch does. <laughs> For fuck's sake. It's a speed limiter. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you probably got to press the end button of that flappy paddle. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you've probably not gone over 30 to, to need it. Oh, I absolutely have. <laughs> I've done like... Um, I've done 40. I've, I've been on um, the thing going... I can't describe it without saying where we live. <laughs> Dual carriageway? You know where I work? No. Yep. The main road leading up to that retail uh, business park. The dual carriageway. I mean, it is, but that specific dual carriageway. Yes. So I've at least done fifty. I mean, you should be doing no more than fifty on that road. <laughs> I'm trying to think of where else I've been that I've done more than that, but I don't think I have been. Anywhere. I've done speeds, okay. Mm. I've done the dual carriageway leading up to that. That's forty as well. Have you pulled up alongside somebody you know and rolled down the window and gone, family, and just pulled off? No. Well, you're not an experienced driver then, aren't you? I mean, I pulled up beside my other Peugeot-owning compadre. compadre. Yes. I just rocked up outside. Um, uh, oh, God. <laughs> Names. The, the skinny bitch that was in the back, I parked up again. I just showed up outside their house. The but they were in bed at 1 p.m. The they they were in bed at 1 p.m., so I just like harassed their dad. And was like, uh, go wake them up. And they did, but both of their parents came out and just went, oh, we're so proud of you. It's a lovely car. <laughs> My parents didn't even do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just look at their... their their child and they're just like see you could have bought a reasonable car oh this person this person has gone from like a high end beamer that got written off to shitbox like absolute shitbox like you remember seeing that car for the first time that was a shitbox I saw the toy I pulled up and I was like how the mighty have fallen (laughs) yeah and like they got inside my car and were like huh this is what a mid range car looks like like, fuck off. <laughs> That's been like, just, they've had like both ends of the extremes and never just like a standard car. Speaking of this year, I do really want to get a different car. Oh, well, now's the time to sell yours because the second hand market is ridiculous right now. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know I'm just going to do something stupid. Until you go to buy one, and the second house, second house, the second hand market is ridiculous as again. Yeah. Well, true, but if you go to, I don't know, dealerships are even fucking mental at the minute. Mm. I did a private sale. It was technically trade, but it was a private trade seller. Like it wasn't a dealership or anything. But um, it was just some dude in the um. You know yeah, there are two. You know there are two ways to <laughs> the direct way and then the convoluted way past. You know what I'm talking about, right? Sometimes. If you are leaving town to go, <laughs> there is the straight road and then the free for all road. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. My dude, my dude lived in the free for all road, and uh, is a like sole trader, and has gone to my my other half's company and is now a customer because they got chatting on the way back. So what happened is I bought the car. I was like, I would like it now, please. And he was like, okay, I can drive it to your house if you give me a lift back. Because obviously I went there in his car. Um, So he was just driving this dude back for like half an hour in the car. They got chatting and now he's a customer at the motor parts place that he works. Nice. (laughs) Nice. 
you should have given you a bit more discount on the car then. Well, I, I didn't even That's... expect to be haggling on the price at all. But I did end up getting £195 off it. Uh, see, if you'd asked me, I'd got it for two grand. Well, the th- I, I, I thought I'd just... I wasn't expecting any kind of discount and it was reasonably cheap for what it is anyway. Like, if you try and find a petrol automatic, let alone a GT, like it's... 2200 is reasonable for that. Yeah, yeah. We're like, happy, that's all that matters. Yeah, with reasonably low mileage for its age as well. Yeah. Like 89,000 for a 2008 car is not bad. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was 2395 and he was like, I'm willing to negotiate on price. I'm like, I was originally looking for two grand, so 2122 is fine, whatever you can do. And he gave me 22 and I was happy with it. Mm, yeah. Yeah. My insurance quoted the value of the car as 2300 anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Done pretty well. Mm. I feel like I did my due diligence and did like the first responsible adult thing I've done in a very long time. I mean, yeah, like I'm actually proud that you you, you passed your test and you instantly bought a vehicle. I thought you were going to be very indecisive and also like, oh, I don't want to spend money. No, I spent like the whole next 24 hours looking on Gumtree and looking at like three different dealerships uh, around me and all the dealerships didn't have anything manual or automatic under like five, six grand. <gasps> oh, I'll tell you what we can do. Something what? that I've always wanted to do in a soft top, well, a hard top convertible. Uh, convertible. We need to buy like, um, what are they called? Like head scarves and do like a Thelma and Louise. Yeah, I thought you were going to want to stick condoms out the window, I'm not going to lie. Nah, that's childish. I want to film more in the wee stuff. Let's drive off a cliff. We can do that. I mean, it's got to be somewhere where we don't need any luggage. Well, I guess the back seat is basically luggage. I mean, if we're driving off a cliff, Katie, we don't really need luggage. We're not going to be going anywhere except for a final destination. You don't know what we need. Okay, that's fair. We might need stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we just get to the bottom and we're like, oh fuck, well that didn't go. Yeah, what if we don't die? We'll, st- we'll need stuff. Oh right. uh, yeah, that's a good point. You just have to kill each other. Fair Hunger Games. <sighs> so I had a question. Had... Um, you know when uh, you pass your test, did you have to? Did they quiz you on the highway code changes? No, but they factored in heavily on my test because pedestrians are being dicks about it. Oh yeah. Oh, I did have a. I had a pedestrian today that thought they were trying to flaunt the uh, the new rules. Yeah. And uh, and purely my answer was like, dude, it's easier for me, easier for you to stop your two legs than me to stop a you know a ton and a half man, especially not, when you're just trying to cut across. It's not the rules, Aaron. Every <sighs> time, every time I'm across. driving around at the minute, um, I'm going by the Pizza Hut near the old nightclub that we loved um and i'm going down that road near the overpass car park like Mm -hmm. that little lumpy bumpy road and there's Mm -hmm. always a fucking amazon van dropping off workers so like every time i'm trying to come out of that car park there's like 50 pedestrians just chilling in the road that's fair game (laughs) yeah (laughs) every it's happened like three times since i've been driving in my car Oh, I see, if you were to do it, you could like just shout out like a pun as you've like as you've done it, and just be like prime this, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> How's this for same day delivery? <laughs> I got the fucking easiest questions, and I I got the flukiest test ever. Like I, I'm very lucky. So my driving instructor was like, "Do you want to do reverse bay parking as your manoeuvre?" And I was like, "Absolutely fucking not." Um, he was like, "Cool, go in and park now." So I went in and parked. And I got called out first, and all the bays were taken up by candidates. So I couldn't do my reverse bay park at the start. So they picked another one for me. So the manoeuvres you've got to do now are parallel parking, forward bay parking, reverse bay parking, and pulling over on the right-hand side of the road and reversing while staying reasonably close to the curb by two car lengths. Um, I got the one where I literally had to reverse in a straight line for two car lengths without, without mounting the curb. Hmm. Piece of piss. I was going to say that doesn't sound difficult, but I can imagine on the test it, it can be quite nervy. Yeah, and you've got five minutes to carry out the manoeuvre, so I literally just crawled back while keeping straight, just in case. 
And my show me question was, when it's safe to do so, please clean the front windscreen. <laughs> like, fine. It's it's one button on my indicator. Cool. Because um, I was driving a 2000 Merc, like a 20 plate Merc. Um, and my tell me question was, how, where would you find the tyre pressure and how would you check it? Which is also a very easy question. I get my dad to do it for me. <laughs> ben, so you, hold on, hold on. Where would you check? Me? Yeah. Um, how, mine. No, where would you, yeah, where would you find it and how would you check it? Uh, mine is actually in my we're looking fuel. For the, we're looking for the gov answer, like the actual passing answer. Oh, no, I yeah. want to see what Ben's on. There's, there's a plate and it's in my fuel cap. That's you know a weird the place. You know the place that you open the, on the body where the fuel cap's located. There's mm-hmm. a sticker there that has all the gauges on it. Hmm. And uh, I have a tire pressure checker, and I have a pump that has a gauge in it. Annoyingly, hmm. that wouldn't be the correct answer. Would it not? What would it be? The approved answer is you would find the correct tire pressure in the user user manual, and you would check it using a reliable pressure gauge. Right. So I've got two pressure gauges. But and the answer literally has to be you would use a reliable pressure gauge. Oh, then you have to say reliable. Yeah. I have to use old reliable <laughs> and using the manufacturer's instructions printed on the car. Yeah, it wouldn't be. You'd have to say the owner manual because all no. cars can be different. Yeah, but it's literally printed on the car. Yeah, I know. Still not the it, answer. It, it, it can't be different. It's printed on the car. Still not the answer! <laughs> They want to know how you check it in any car, not your car. It, literally every car since 2005 has it printed on it somewhere. Yeah, and someone I knew was driving a 1998 Corsa. So, <laughs> any car, Ben. Any it doesn't car. It doesn't even matter if you get the show me, tell me questions wrong. Because if you get all of them wrong, you just get one minor. I want to know. I want to know what the other one was. Um, uh, Aaron. Show me how you remove a deer from your headlights. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? Um, <clears throat> is the deer alive or is the deer dead? It's it's semi alive. Halfway it, there. It seems dead, but when you go to touch it, it's going to buck viciously. <laughs> it's, it's twitchy. It's twitchy on approach, and then violent on touching. You know, Bambi. It's not Bambi. It's Bambi's dad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so it's a buck. It's not a deer. It's, it's a buck. A, it's a, it's a full size buck. How would you remove an entire moose from your grill? <laughs> you wouldn't. Your car would be fucking written off. <laughs> They're like six foot six. They're fucking units. They're fucking insane. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I'm just keep thinking of that TikTok now. <laughs> I look like a moose. <laughs> But a very cute moose. They call the boy moose go. <laughs> right. I want to. I want more. Tell me questions. Uh, what's the square root of five? <laughs> tell me. Such a wank. <laughs> Such a bitch. Why are you being such a bitch? Why am I getting fucking adverts after adverts? <laughs> oh, open the bonnet and tell me how you check the engine has sufficient oil. <laughs> yeah, I can see that's an engine right there, sir. <laughs> um, you take the dipstick out. Give and it a little you, flick around. Give it a wipe. Yep. Yeah. You get yeah, your instructor's you get the instructor's white shirt and you rub it on that. Get all the old oil off and <laughs> dop it back in. Make sure you hit the sides because you know that's what counts. Tell me yeah. how you check that the brakes are working before starting a journey. Give them a little pump. And what would you look for? Um, <laughs> Lack of movement. <laughs> the the moaning. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> pump me, Daddy! <laughs> oh, I want to reprogram my car horn to go like hoya. <laughs> Just uh, 
the thing is, we're we're closely approaching the sentient AI future, where artificial intelligence is probably going to be dropped into cars for you know, navigation and. Nah, have purposes. you seen the fucking self-driving Teslas? They're a death trap. Yeah, but you know we can't even get that right yet. Uh, what, besides Siri and Alexa, we're we're gonna have some custom ones, and there's definitely gonna be some sub ones in there somewhere. <laughs> I mean, the answer was up to the brake thing. If anyone cared, was um, it shouldn't feel spongy or slack, and the car shouldn't pull to one side. Okay, but surely you should do that without your, you know, <laughs> without moving. <laughs> no, you slowly roll forward and check. Okay. How would you make sure your head restraint is correctly adjusted? For for a minute there, I thought you were like the Hannibal Lecter, like head strapped to a table. <laughs> I was like, you wouldn't. It would be done for you. <laughs> I've got a spit guard in. I can't even talk. I presume it's saying along the lines of make sure the middle of the headrest is above the middle of your head or something like that. Yeah, the rigid part of the headrest should be at least uh, level to your eyes mm. or something. There's one that's like, tell me how you check the tyres to ensure they have sufficient tread depth. And the answer is like you use a tread depth gauge and yep, like 20, check it with that. But I was going to say a 20p. <laughs> I've actually got a a, a thread depth gauge. Yeah, I've got one in my Amazon basket right now. But oh, I would also use a 20p. That was going to be my sort of like qualm with this. Like, it's the exact right millimetre depth. When it's safe to do so, show me how you operate the horn. Because <laughs> <laughs> that would be, have you, you've seen the TikTok like Tesla videos where they replaced a the horn with custom sounds. That's what I mean. Yeah. I want mine to be queer. <laughs> Fucking Teslas need to calm down. We took one of the first like self-driving Teslas for a ride when I was working at an electronic car charging company. And they were great at 30 miles or less. Um, because they could only... So they were like registered to stay inside solid white lines. <laughs> Um, but they couldn't really register solid white lines and like dashed lines also registered on their like stay in lane software. So at 30 miles an hour, if you tried to change lane, it'd be like, bitch, no, <laughs> just like cement you to your lane. <laughs> like, fuck off. <laughs> disable, disable. <laughs> and then if you were going above 30, it just wouldn't work. <laughs> really bad design. Sound- yeah, that does sound horrendous. Like, considering mm-hmm. the state of our roads as well, mm-hmm. and the parking situations, like... <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate, the amount of, like... It really is true that when you pass your driving test, that's when you learn to drive. Oh, yeah. Because I am... Uh, I'm taking gaps that I wouldn't dare take with my driving instructor. Yeah, yeah. I like on my driving lessons. I was like slowing down to basically stop for every roundabout, regardless of what was coming. And now I'm just like, seems clear. Meow. <laughs> I mean, it's. I, I. I think me and Ben can definitely agree on this. No, I, I don't. Well, fuck you, Ben. <laughs> I don't think I could ever pass my test in London. <laughs> oh God, no. Oh yeah, easy. Yeah, all well, the traffic, the whole 40 minutes would just be sitting still. <laughs> okay, so if you uh, safely do a U-turn, oh, you failed. <laughs> back we're, into we're just, the test oh. We're just going to go five minutes out and five minutes back. Uh, that's the whole hour. Thank you. Yeah, that's probably about as much as you will be travelling in a daily commute. <laughs> I, I went for a drive with me, uh, with me two other sidekicks and um, was going right at a roundabout and indicated right to go around the roundabout and they were like, holy shit. You're really better than half the drivers in this town. Yeah, you, you've stopped doing that. <laughs> that won't last long. There's one roundabout by the big bank. It's like bank, pub, Matalan. Stop. Like, yeah, yeah, that that roundabout. You know the roundabout I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Fucking no one indicates to go anywhere on that roundabout, and it pisses <laughs> yeah, me off. We know this from being pedestrians. Yeah, 
I'm just, just put... having to hope that, oh, they're in the outside lane, they're going off there. Bye. No. Just put your hazards on and just drive. <laughs> <laughs> I am the hazard. <laughs> just, just straight over the roundabout. Like, I I took a really dodgy gap the other day, and I really shouldn't have done it. Did you crash? No. Then you're fine. Scared the uh, passengers, but... Did you cause somebody else to crash? Nope. Well, I'll tell you what. He did that what. thing that you do, Aaron. You know when someone takes a gap that they absolutely can make, but it pisses you off that they attempted it, so you speed up. <laughs> yeah. So that if, oh. if you crash, it's their fault just because you're a dick. That's what they did. <laughs> I, I thought you meant when Aaron Aaron was in the passenger seat and they do the grab grab the handle and go. <laughs> nah, every time we're at the little mini roundabout that comes from the plant, you're coming from the plant on the left side, oh, half yeah. the right is into town. Yeah, every time we're on that roundabout, he goes to go and someone takes a very, very adequate gap. Like, they can make it at the speed they're going. He decides to... Vroom! And, like, gets right up their ass so he can beep or go, fucking... Vroom! Like, just say something. Whoa, 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 whoa. Fuck you. What about you that taxi beep. driver? You don't beep. That, no, you did that. He could have no, made that gap. He could have made that gap. And you he decided to speed up, so he was in the wrong. Well, so he was still in the wrong. <laughs> you decided to go thirty round and mini roundabout to prove someone wrong. Yeah. So what? <laughs> he was in the fucking wrong. He would have made it if you hadn't sped up. He well, judged he your fucking... speed. He judged your speed adequately. Took his gap and you fucking sped up. Well, guess what? He fucking didn't judge it properly, did he? <laughs> no, he didn't judge you being a prick. That's what he didn't judge. Well, there you go. There's the hazard of driving. You're me. the hazard. <laughs> <laughs> My suggestion would be to get a dash cam fitted. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm, there's one on the way because um, I've rather gets cost price um, motor bits. Mm. I would suggest getting a hardwire kit and getting it hardwired in as well. It's not That's that what difficult. I want because I also want because I think my car came with parking sensors, but I think they're faulty. So gonna get them either fixed or replaced. Cool. Because I want every kind of safety feature that I can possibly have on this car. Also, I want to be able to put it on my um, insurance. What you got a dash cam? Yeah. Yeah, they won't knock much off for it. I also kind of want to do pass plus so I can get that. No, no point. No, doesn't it lower on... some premiums? No, no. because well, I think it slightly does, but also you do realise that any accident that you are involved in, they will penalise you for. Excuse me. Yep. Really? What do you mean? Because you've passed the pass, uh, the pass plus. That's supposed to mean that you are a, a more qualified driver, professional driver. Therefore, any accident that you are in, they'll go, well, you should have known better. Driver. You should have known better. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. It's one of those sort of, that's why, who do you know that's done the past plus? I don't, um, I assume no one can be bothered. <laughs> I always thought it was kind of a, do you know when you, because can you go on the motorway now as a learner? Nope. Yes. No, I thought, you, I thought nope. you thought they were going to add that in. I don't think you can. So I always thought it, the plus plus was for people who were like, "Oh, let's go do a few lessons afterwards." On That's the what I thought it was initially. So I never bothered. I just went on the motorway at like two in the morning, and it was clear. Ah, uh, you can go on if you've got if you're in an instructor's car with dual controls, but not in a vehicle without them as a learner. Oh, okay. I remember when I passed my test and I got chucked. I went for an interview. I hadn't drove in years and I got chucked to works van uh, down in Hemel Hempstead. And I was like, shit, I've, n- I've literally not drove since I pretty much passed my test. Fuck. How am I going to do this? And probably for the first week or so, I set my Tom Tom at the time to avoid motorways. <laughs> <laughs> so I was getting phone calls from my work like what the fuck is taking you so long and I'm like yeah I'm on my way I'm on my way and they're like where the fuck are you like it should be like a 20 minute drive and you're currently taking 45 minutes I'm like yeah because you know I'm going through the back roads 
I'm avoiding motorways for as long as I physically can. <laughs> no, I don't, don't want them. I don't, want don't them. do it. Get it over with. Yeah. I think get I'd rather with. get on an A road and go to like one of the neighbouring towns no, first. No, you, you're going to give yourself the fear. Get well, on no, the motorway. If, if I get on like... I can't say it without like giving away, but you know yeah, where the just, gym is on the A on that A road near me. It does, just jump on. I'm going. Oh, that's what I'm, I'm going to work just, up to it. I'm going to work up to it. Just, why, just why don't you come the back roads to mine, and then we'll jump on the most way <laughs> southbound. Because they are you. terrifying. Nah. Well, the junction near me is per- is probably the most perfect sort of ease into it. It's just it's just a, a big road. I feel like going. Um, I can't even. I think motorways are better than normal roads because you don't have randos just oh. fucking driving sideways. Hundred <laughs> percent. You know which lane you should be in on the motorway. Mm. Everyone's going the same way. <laughs> <laughs> if you're not, you have a problem. <laughs> We're um, because you can drive other cars, can't you? Yes. Come down mine one day, and we'll work up to it. <laughs> okay. You can drive on cars as well. I can, yeah. Yeah. Only on Max, though. <laughs> yeah, only on oh. Max. Which means that she can't drive any of our vehicles. Oh. I was going to say we could have done a car swap. And you could, <laughs> <laughs> you could see oh, how like... Do you want to drive my little shitbox? Have you got to drive other cars on your insurance? Yeah, I can drive any car. Yeah. Get on, get get behind my car and see what you think of it. <laughs> It'd just be like driving a fucking bumper car, wouldn't it? Yeah. Hairdresser's car. It handles pretty well, but the steering is super light. Like, every bump in the road, or every, like pothole or whatever, the wheels just like... <laughs> open, open the glove box, all the hair falls out. <laughs> <laughs> How does it go again, Katie? <laughs> <laughs> that's, our, that's our voice clip for this episode. <laughs> 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 okay, I think that's a wrap. <laughs> I was also just going to say, like, I have the most, just quickly, I have the most deceptive glove box. I got really excited that I had this massive glove box space. Open it up, it is entirely pollen filter. <laughs> it is all pollen filter. There is, like, a tiny little cup-sized hole, and that is my glove box. The whole compartment comes down and just reveals pollen filter. Yeah. What are you meant to put in the glove box? My belongings. Gloves. <laughs> my belongings! A gun. Does it fit gloves? It does, but like it doesn't fit. Problem my, solved. Like logbook or manual or paper. It's not a logbook. I want to put all my Boxed. shit in there. <laughs> you can't. It's for gloves. No. <laughs> it's gonna Maybe you push back. a pen and sunglasses. That's all. I do have like a fistable hole under my wheel, though. A, a wheat. A fistable hole. Like it's. A, I found a massive compartment under my wheel. <laughs> Under your wheel? Like, down to the right-hand side underneath, I've got, like, a little compartment. Why is it under your wheel? I don't know, but it's where my vape is. Is it behind your wheel? Yeah. Not under? But, like, yeah, it technically is under. I'm glad there is a big hole underneath your steering wheel, because that's where your legs go, Katie. Y'all are mean. I found a secret tunnel. Oh, I thought she meant the... I'm excited about it. I she meant the outside wheels. (laughs) I was, so talking guys, about in- <laughs> I was talking about inside the car compartments. Why would I be talking you about just, You were just like, there's a hole under my wheel. <laughs> like, what? Thank you for joining us for another thrilling <laughs> episode of Drive Time with Katie. <laughs> I found a secret tunnel and I'm very excited. Oh, for fuck's sake, where's it going to go? Brand's secret hat. tunnel. Just... Secret tunnel. The, the sound clip is a fistable hole. <laughs> it's, it's I, done. I like Name my fistable hole. I like yes. my fistable hole. It fits my vape. <laughs> <laughs> Good, goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>